What is up? Felix Flair here for Thoman Synthesizers and I received a very very lovely package from Moog and while there aren't any actual new synths featured in it, I think it's still worth having a look at. So let's see what we got. All right, this is the Moog Sound Studio bundle or at least one of the two versions. This is the version featuring the Moog DFAM and the Mother 32. There's also a version featuring the DFAM and the Subharmonicon. And the set consists of, yeah, the two synths, obviously. This neat little rack, which seems to be the most efficient way to actually stack these two in a very tiny space. Then you get this neat little, um, yeah, patch cable holder here. And besides from some other lovely accessories like uh, these little books with tons of patch ideas and uh, even some sound design games where you can roll a dice to get some uh, interesting ideas, there's also this little mixer back here, which is uh, on the one hand an audio mixer, which actually lets you mix the signals of the two synths, but also a combined power supply for both units. So it's a really nice uh, all around package to get started with the Moog universe. Anyways, let's get started by creating our own little patch to check out these two. Starting with the DFAM on top here, because this is actually a very unconventional drum machine. And the way it works is really lovely. As you can see here, there's actually a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight step sequencer. And each step in the sequence has two controls. The lowest is the volume or velocity control, to be more precise. And the upper one is a pitch control. And because these are not quantized, Pretty much no matter what you do, each of these eight steps is going to be a completely unique sound. And this is of course lovely, especially if you want to have a more organic sound that doesn't sound like your average drum machine and more sound design focused and abstract. And what I actually love to do is to create samples with this one, because you basically just do one pattern like this and you have eight unique percussion samples or bass samples or kicks or whatever. And uh, then I like to import these into my octa track and I actually use them in all sorts of uh, grooves that I want to create because these are like this little tiny uh, unique sparkles. Maybe we can look into one of my little jams and you can actually um, yeah, focus on these little uh, DFAM sparkles. And it's actually just very tiny details, but I think this is really what can set a groove apart. I think for this, the DFAM is actually the most amazing tool. Um, which is why I'm actually going to prepare a little sample pack for you as well, so that you can download some of the sounds and chop them up and include them into your own uh, grooves. But anyways, let's go on with this little groove here. As you can see, we have two VCOs, voltage controlled oscillators. This is the first one. And now I'm going to mix in a second one, playing some higher notes. But only very subtly. You also have this noise oscillator here. So, why don't we go ahead and start patching a bit? Because one of the very obvious ways you can uh, make these sounds more dynamic. As you can see, here's a fairly large patch bay. And these uh, white squares here are signifying the outputs and the rest are inputs. So we can use all sorts of signals to modulate all sorts of other signals. And the two most obvious choices, um, and I think also most useful, are the velocity out and the pitch out. Because what this allows us to do is 
with these settings here basically, not just to control the velocity and the pitch, but also something else in addition. So for example, I could say that the uh, velocity, or let's take a shorter cable here, the velocity um, would also, for example, modulate the voltage controlled filter mod. So this one here. Um, so now, the higher the velocity is, the more we have uh, this mod going to the right side, I think. So let's try it out real quick. Yeah, yeah. the more I turn this clockwise, the more the sound will be influenced by the velocity, the filter mod. And what else could we do? We could use the pitch and this will work exactly the same way. Then the pitch setting will actually affect not only the pitch but also something else. In this case, uh, maybe the voltage controlled oscillator decay? No, the filter. VCF decay. The filter decay, which is this one. So now, the higher the pitch, the longer the VCF decay is going to be. All right, now we have a groove and now maybe, why don't we go ahead and start combining these two? For that, we can take another patch cable and use this assign output here. This one is actually one that you can assign yourself. Uh, I assigned it to be a clock, which is the most obvious choice. So now I'm gonna uh, patch it into this clock receiver here. And now if everything works out, and this one is actually activated, um, I should be able yeah, to control the tempo from the mother 32, but also affect the defam. Perfect. So now the two are synced and I can actually start creating some little bass line or melody on top of it, because that's what the mother 32 really excels at as a monosynth. Um, actually, as you can see, we have this little keyboard here. <laughs> which actually allows us to play this like a real instrument. I'm really surprised how expressive actually even this tiny little keyboard is. Basically to just explore your main um, yeah, idea here before you actually record it. As you can hear, there's also uh, already a bit of reverb uh, on the Mother 32, which comes from my Ableton actually. As you can hear, as always with the Moog oscillators, it's basically instant boards of Canada. Okay, lovely. So now, if we would want to create a pattern, we could actually first clear the sequencer, which is, I think, this combination. Or, what am I doing? No, this one. Exactly. And now, the sequence is clear, and if I start playing it, it should always play the same note, I think. Let me stop it again. To enable the recorder, this one should blink. Yeah, exactly. And now I can actually record these eight steps here. Now I have my sequence here, and if I press play, actually it should play this sequence, perfectly quantized. And yes, now we have our little sequence. And up next, to give this thing a little movement, we could actually try to utilize the LFO here. So we could patch the output from the LFO triangle wave, because the LFO has a square wave and a triangle. And we could use it to modulate, for example, the uh, cutoff of the filter. And now this LFO should be moving this cutoff. 
Let's see. Yes. But I want a more subtle, slow movement. Exactly. All right, and now we could take this thing for a little jam and see where we end up. Alright, I guess that concludes my little tour of the Smoke Sound Studio here. Uh, in case you are still wondering which of the combinations might be most suitable for you, I guess for beginners and people who mainly want to work within 12-tone equal temperament, I would definitely suggest the Mother 32. And for people who want to explore mainly more experimental sound design, I guess I would uh, recommend having another look at the Sub Harmonicon. As I said, I'm going to link the video. And don't forget to download the DFAM sample pack, which I will create upon upload of this video and link for you in the description. All right, that's it from my side for today. In case you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'll try to answer every single one of them. Apart from that, thanks for tuning in. See you next time. Peace out.